That's fantastic because that's precisely the motivation uh, which pushed me to create Singularity Symposium and Singularity Weblog and take on the alias uh, Socrates because, you know, Socrates is this philosophical father figure who claims that he never taught anyone anything but was the midwife uh, uh, with whose help people gave birth to their own ideas. And as we can see his own students, they often have uh, mutually exclusive uh, philosophies, uh, and yet he took them all under his wing in a way. So that's what it was all about, and that's what my, my blog and my website are aiming to do. So I really appreciate that. that uh, what well, you thank said. you, Ed, and I appreciate what you're doing. And it's absolutely the most interesting thing humanity can do. The worst is when somebody comes along and says, here's what you must believe, and you say, oh, okay, I'll follow you in that. The best is questioning. This is if I have any big complaint about the more conservative religions is they don't allow for questioning and dissent. Now, I actually am very comfortable with religious people. Um, I, uh, I had a fascinating experience 20-odd years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, I worked, um, I, I edited the license application for what became Vision TV, and I worked with the foundational group, Vision TV being Canada's multi-faith, multi faith multi uh, religious television service. And I got to meet and work with people from all faiths, Sikh and Baha'i and Jew and Christian of every stripe, and, and different stripes of uh, Judaism, of course, and uh, Hindu and, and uh, Muslim and uh, various stripes of all kinds uh, within those things. Uh, you know, none of those are monolithic categories. And what I found was that there were enormously intelligent, well-read, thoughtful people in every single one of those religions. It was an eye open for, for, for me as an arrogant 20, what am I going to say, 23 year old arrogant atheist who took kind of the tack, and I love Arthur C. Clarke, but kind of the tack that Arthur C. Clarke took when he wrote about atheists, oh, about, about religious people. Oh, you silly people, let me just show you the light. <laughs> when in fact there are all kinds of enormously thoughtful, intelligent, highly read, highly literate, thoughtful people. Uh, who wrestle with the same questions I wrestle with and have come up with different answers. It's not my job to say that they're wrong or that they should follow me, and nor do I have any interest in them proselytizing uh, or being evangelical toward me, telling me that I should follow them. But through that dialogue, hopefully both of us are thinking, all of us are thinking, so there's one thing that I want my book to do. It is that old IBM corporate slogan, think, I want to provoke thought. Now, mentioning uh, TV and also provoking thought, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, we already know that some of your work has been adapted for TV, like uh, the Flash Forward um, and so on. But uh, can you share with us, is there anything else in the works coming down the pipe? Uh, perhaps I was hoping uh, the, the WWW trilogy, which I think would be fantastic on the big or the small screen, Thank you. Yes, Flash Forward was an adaptation of my 1999 novel, the same name. It was a TV series on ABC in the 2009-2010 series starring Joe Fiennes and John Cho. Uh, I was delighted with the show. Uh, I am currently working on an adaptation of Wake, Watch, and Wonder. We're collectively calling it Website uh, with a company called Original Pictures, a Canadian production company uh, that has a good track record. We've got a very good pitch. We are in this month actually going out to visit various Canadian broadcasters um, to try and line up financing in Canada. Then you go to the States and look for a co-production. It's a long-term process, but the, the prospectus we put in, let's say, the, um, the, the proposal package we've got, I think, is an excellent package. The producers involved, uh, it's being jointly executive produced by myself, Kim Todd, and Nicholas Hurst. Uh, we all bring different strengths to the table and a good track record, uh, all three of us. I think we've got a real shot. That said, the track record in general of science fiction works being adapted for television or film is very, very, very small. Um, you know, uh, amongst the Nebula Award winners, uh, of which I'm lucky enough to be one for Terminal Experiment, best novel Nebula winners, only two have ever been adapted, Dune, and um, Flowers for Algernon. They both happen to have been adapted repeatedly. Uh, but all the later ones, Rendezvous with Rama, and Ringworld, and The Left Hand of Darkness, and Ender's Game, My Own Terminal Experiment, 
None of these have been adapted. It's a very, very difficult process because it costs tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars to do so. And I don't have that money. If you've got the money, I'll take it and we'll do it. <laughs> but to find somebody who does have the money and is willing to risk it is very, very difficult. But that said, yes, I'm working on an adaptation of Wake, Watch, and Wonder. Uh, and also uh, my agent and I in Hollywood are pitching my forthcoming novel, Triggers, around to studios and having many people showing some considerable interest in that. Um, right now... Um, we also have some considerable interest in my novel, Rollback, to be adapted for a motion picture. Whether any of these will come to pass, I don't know, but we've all got our fingers crossed. Well, I'm noticing lately there is, I think, or at least it looks like, there is a sort of a very notable increase of science fiction, and especially singularity-related science fiction uh, movies uh, that are supposed to be rolling out in the next couple of years. So, for example, one of the other science fiction authors that I'm working on interviewing is uh, Daniel H. Wilson, whose uh, book, uh, whose novel, Robopocalypse, is to be produced by Steven Spielberg and is due for release in 2013, I think. Also, Ronald Emmerich uh, is working on a Singularity movie, I think. And So I, I think that, I'm, first of all, I'm very happy to hear about uh, the W series. That's fantastic news. And... And I, I believe that you have such an incredible good work that, I mean, it would be a waste if people don't seize the opportunity to put it on the big screen. Right. And then you'll discover more millions of people like me who never heard of you before. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, nothing did more for bringing me new readers than the Flash Forward TV series, which was in over 100 countries worldwide. Yeah. It only lasted one year, but it had a very high profile and crossed the planet and brought me more new readers than anything I'd done in my life. And many of those readers went on to read other works, not just the Flash Forward novel. So, yeah, you, there's nothing to beat the reach of film and television. And I've got my fingers crossed. Um, and I'm looking forward to those movies that you just mentioned as well. Fantastic. So um, let me ask you uh, for your books, though. Uh, what is the – are you currently working on, an, on another book? Yes. And oh, 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 it's I, it's my, my career. I do one book a year. and at, I'm always at some point in the production cycle of a novel. So, at this point, I'm in the first draft stage, about two-thirds of the way through, a new book called The Great Martian Fossil Rush, which actually is, a, a, in some sense, a post-singulatarian novel uh, in that it deals in large part with uploaded consciousness and artificial bodies. Fantastic. And, and then what's next for Robert J. Sawyer after the book? Is it another book? As you said, every year you publish Every year I, I got bills to pay, so I better write a new book. Um, <laughs> after that, I haven't entirely made up my mind what I'm going to write. Um, I've got several possibilities, but I think um, The Great Martian Fossil Rush is a bit of an aberration for me because it's almost entirely set on Mars. Uh, and I'm going to come back to the present day on Earth uh, with a story. I, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do. Uh, and it's going to be a story that I think will appeal to people who have uh, enjoyed my books that are set in the present day. One of the things I take great pleasure in doing as a science fiction writer is writing present day, not future, not even near future, but present day science fiction. So that novels like Illegal Alien and Frame Shift and Hominids, Humans and Hybrids, Wake, Watch and Wonder are set in the year that the book is published or just about um, rather than uh, being futuristic. And that's brought me a much bigger readership than things that are even five, ten years down the road has brought me. And for those who do believe in the uh, radical singularity notion, there's no point in writing science fiction 20 years down the road because we're not able to predict that <laughs> part uh, if the singularity is coming down the pike. So uh, I try to write things that really are real, honest to God, true science fiction, but set in the present day. And the one after the Great Martian Fossil Rush, the Great Martian Fossil Rush, set um, about... Um, 90 years from now, I guess 80 years from now. But um, the uh, the next novel will be set, will come out in 2014 and will be set in 2014. So for those of our viewers and listeners who, like me, don't watch TV and do not have the, the good fortune of taking the Toronto subway system, uh, what's the best place for them to find more information about you? I was lucky enough to, or for, had enough foresight, to be the first science fiction writer in the world to have a dedicated website for science fiction. It's at sfwriter.com. 
S is in science, F is in fiction, writer.com. And it's also a massive website. It's got over a million words of text, 730 documents. Um, you can get lost in there. Lots of stuff about my books. I was the first science fiction writer to give fiction away for free on the web, uh, starting um, in 1995. And there's free fiction there. There's uh, uh, reader's guides for my books. There's bibliographies for the research in some of my books. Uh, there's how to write stuff, an enormous amount of stuff about Canadian science fiction, not just my own, but the whole field of Canadian science fiction. Go visit sfwriter.com and, and find out more about me. Fantastic. Robert, the last question that I always ask of, ask of my guests uh, on the show is always the same, and that is, do you have a single message that you would like our viewers and listeners to take away from our interview today? I am, despite everything we've talked about, I am optimistic about the future. I think science and technology has made the world a better place, and it will continue to do so. I think we are lucky enough right now to live in the best time that has ever been, but it is going to be exceeded by the times that are to come. We're not at the end of the human era, whereas, you know, it's actually a very interesting post-singulatarian science fiction film, Star Trek The Motion Picture, which is about artificial intelligence and humanity at the end merging with AI. But what is the ending card that appears after the last scene? The human adventure is just beginning. We are just at the beginning of this remarkable ride for humanity. It's not the end of an era. It's uh, We're in the middle of the ongoing human adventure. And in my novels, I try to be one of the chroniclers of that. Robert J. Sawyer, thank you very much for taking the time to be here with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.